morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's 10.15. We are ready to start. We request that uh, kindly we take our seats. Thank you very much. The IGAD Executive Secretary, Dr. Wakane Gebeyehu, the Chairperson of the IGAD Committee of Ambassadors, our very distinguished ambassadors from our member states, community leaders that have been invited from our region grassroots people, our development partners, IGAD special envoys, IGAD directors, colleagues, IGAD researchers who are with us. My name is Simon Nyambura. I am the director of the IGAD Center of Excellence for Preventing and Countering Violent Extremism. I am truly humbled and honored to serve as your MC today. I wish on behalf of the Executive Secretary of IGAD to warmly welcome you to this very second State of the Region address that he will be giving us shortly. Karibuni sana Mombasa. Let me start uh, just basically uh, reminding you what you know, obviously, uh, that uh, we are dealing with, uh, we are at war with uh, a pandemic called COVID-19. And given that we have been given several weapons on how to fight it, uh, including wearing masks, social distance, so we have uh, good tools that are called protocols, we humbly request you not to drop any of those tools down keep them with you so that we keep safeguarding and protecting each other. We have also tried to arrange everything in our setting uh, to ensure that we observe uh, those protocols. I also wish to inform you that we are streaming live. We have a number of uh, radio stations from the region who are sharing what we have here with our people in the region. So we welcome them. We have several hashtags that uh, 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 we are treating. So we are really online, both uh, uh, within the region and uh, uh, internationally. So I also uh, take this opportunity to welcome all those who are joining us online. Let me just pose a question, why are we here? Two years ago, Exactly, Dr. Wakane took over the leadership of the IGAD as the IGAD Executive Secretary. Let's please uh, give him a pause. He came armed with a vision, and this vision is well articulated within a framework of three R's. And these three R's are that he wants to see an IGAD that is responsive to member states and the people of the region. The second R, he wants to see an IGAD that is revitalized both internally and externally. And finally, the third R is that he wants to see an IGAD that is reformed to deal with the challenges of 21st century and beyond, and not just the challenges but also to seize the opportunities that are presented to us. And crowning all this <coughs> is that, <coughs> sorry, he also said he want to see an IGAD that is accountable. An IGAD that is accountable to the people of the region, an IGAD that is accountable to its member states, an IGAD that is accountable to its partners and friends. And therefore, for us, as people who work in IGAD, we were clearly told that this is IGAD of the people, for the people, and by the people. 
And therefore, in that spirit of accountability, Dr. Wakane came up with the idea that he will be accountable to the people of the region and those who support IGAD in our work by giving a state of the region address. And within this state of the region, he gets to give that accountability. And that's why we are here, to get that accountability for the last two years, what have we been doing on your behalf as your true servants. Now, colleagues, allow me to introduce Dr. Wakane. Dr. Wakane is not stranger to many of you. He has served humanity in several capacities, both at domestic, regional, continental, and international level. For those who are from Ethiopia, you remember him as a young man 30 years old as commissioner of police. Uh, those are not things that you get at 30 years. You need to be extraordinary to be appointed when you're 30 years to be in charge of an entire police force. For those who have had an opportunity to visit Addis Ababa and Ethiopia and outside, you'll see the expansive uh, road network and the railway system. That is courtesy of Dr. Wakane, who served as Minister of Transport in Ethiopia uh, for five years. For those who are diplomats, and I see many diplomats here, you might recall many of the continental and international uh, conventions, uh, resolutions that we have had. Dr. Wakane has been part of that as Minister of Foreign Affairs of Ethiopia for IGAD we are truly to have him as our executive secretary. But colleagues, all that you know. But now I want to tell you something perhaps you don't know about Dr. Wakane. For us who work with him in IGAD, we have learned something new about him from what we see in public domain, that Dr. Wakane is a man of family. He loves family not just his family, but also our families as Igad. He is a family man. Secondly, I want to tell you a story that was told to me by a friend of mine. When the Prime Minister Abia took over as Prime Minister, uh, he went uh, to Washington with some of his ministers, and one of that minister was Dr. Wakane. And when he was introducing Dr. Wakane, he said, this is a man with a good heart. This is a man who never abandoned his friend. Colleagues, that's the executive secretary of IGAD that we have. <laughs> Colleagues, <laughs> kindly join me in welcoming Dr. Wakane, the executive secretary of IGAD, to give us the state of the region address. Welcome, Your Excellency. Thank you very much, Dr. Simon, for introduction and for good words. Good morning, <clears throat> colleagues, dear friends. I'm very happy to be here in front of you to deliver my second State of the Region address. Before I start my speech, I want to thank all of you who are working tirelessly to make this event a reality. Last year, exactly, we were here at this house to make my first year State of the Region address, but I am seeing that this one is big in terms of number of media and also the participation of all our member states. So I'm very happy to be here to address our region of 200 
50 million people region which have a lot of things that I'm going to explain. Thank you very much. Shukran. Asante sana. Your Excellencies, <clears throat> the distinct, distinguished members of the IGAD Committee of Ambassadors, honorable representatives of fellow citizens of the IGAD region drawn from the various cross-border cluster areas, our esteemed partners, both here and outside the region, who have joined us online, my brothers and sisters, members of the IGAD family, fellow citizens of the IGAD region, ladies and gentlemen. It is indeed <clears throat> a privilege and honor to have the opportunity to deliver the second state of the region address. This annual reflection comes as I commemorate my two years of in office and mark a halfway point of my first term at the executive secretary of our illustrious organization. 375 days ago, <clears throat> at a time like this, we gathered here in the historic city of Mombasa for the Median State of Igad Region Address. In the one year and 10 days that have elapsed, we have witnessed seismic events in our region that have tried our collective resolve and tested our resilience. If 2020 was a difficult year for our region, 2021 laid even more difficult challenges at our feet and exacted to heavy toll in our resolve. I will once more open this year's State of the Region address by inviting us all to mediate on the preamble of the 1996 agreement established IGAD, our organization. The paragraph of the preamble set out the aspiration of the forerunners of the further generation to come, of which we are the first. We are determined to overcome the recover from the multitude of challenges that continue to beset us even now. And in keeping <clears throat> with our reputation as adaptive innovators, we still find create opportunities to bounce back bigger, better, and bolder. The orientation of the biggest challenges in 2021 shifted from the natural hazard posed by the COVID-19 pandemic, desert locust invasion and flooding and pivoted abruptly to focus on peace, security, and stability of our region. It is this point that I would like to take you to appreciate the foresight of the founding fathers of IGAD, who 10 years after the establishment of our August organization convened on the 25th of November 1996 to lead the way in examining the other deterrents to development affecting our region and consider effective way of overcoming them. Our founding fathers were of the same minds as the late Samora Machel, president of the Republic of Mozambique and a true son of Africa, who once said international solidarity is not an act of charity. It is an act of unity between allies, equally, equal unity on different terrains. Moving toward to the same objective, and the foremost of the objective is to aid the development of humanity to the highest level to possible. From a one-dimensional institution whose focus was confined to responding to drought and related natural disasters, our leaders armed the revitalized IGAD with an inner large mandate that among other priorities, opened the door for IGAD to intercede 
in the fundamental issue of peace, security, and stability. In responding to this and other conflict issues affecting our region, IGAD has always been guided by the provision set out in Article 6A of the 1996 agreement establishing IGAD which mandate us. I will quote from our uh, agreement that maintain regional peace, stability and security by pursuing the peaceful settlement of both intra-state and interstate conflicts through dialogue, while at the same time respecting the principle of non-interference in the internal affairs of member states and upholding their sovereign equality. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the internal challenges affecting two of our largest member states, our chair, the Republic of Sudan, and our rapporteur, the Federal Democratic Republic of Ethiopia, is undeniably a cause of serious anxiety within our region and beyond. In the case of Sudan, the disruption of the transition to civilian rule in September of this year became a matter of concern not only for IGAD, but for our continent and international community as well. This situation is threatening to undermine public confidence in the progress that had been made so far in readmitting Sudan to the community of nations. Furthermore, the developments endangered the tireless mediation efforts led by His Excellency President Salva Kiir last over 25 months and culminating in the historic Juba Peace Agreement to end the war in Darfur that was signed in June of this year to which IGAD is a guarantor. IGAD was therefore greatly relieved that last month the government of Sudan listened to the call of all the people of Sudan to reinstate Prime Minister Abdullah Hamdok, restore civilian rule, and release of political leaders that had been detained. However, as the situation is still active, IGAD remains fully engaged in Sudan in committed to work with the government to fulfill the aspiration of the people of Sudan. And we are very sure the people and the government of Sudan will resolve this thing for once and forever. Excellencies, within this framework, IGAD has therefore been actively engaged in applying quiet diplomacy through the good office of our various heads of states and governments as an instrument for resolving the peace and security challenges prevalent in our region. In this regard, we are particularly grateful for the effort made by the people of Sudan all parties to the conflict and the international community toward resolving this situation. IGAD therefore re reiterates its call upon the people and government of Sudan to remain engaged in constructive dialogue and positive actions geared toward the return of civilian rule and realization of the aspiration reflected in the 2019 2024 roadmap to civilian leadership outlined in the peace agreement. Your Excellencies, <clears throat> the IGAD citizens, the situation in Ethiopia has filled us all with also with concern. Ethiopia has for the longest time been a pillar of peace and security, a beacon of stability and anchor of all major things in Africa. It has the singular destination being the only uncolonized state in the entire continent of Africa. As a nation, Ethiopia have always worn this badge with honor and recognized 
the obligation that comes with this status to be champions of liberty for Africans, brothers and sisters, and wherever. The historical record speaks clearly to the pivotal role that Ethiopia played in the liberation struggle of her sister's countries in Africa. As a headquarter of our continental organization, and in addition to all reasons that I have elaborated upon before, it is of utmost importance for IGAD and Africa to learn that the situation in Ethiopia does not escalate any further and a solution is found as soon as possible while respecting the sovereignty and the territorial integrity of Ethiopia. IGAD places great confidence and trust in the wisdom of Ethiopians to chart the path to lasting peace and calls upon all people of goodwill to be in solidarity with Ethiopia as it works to find a lasting solution to the, this conflict. Within the framework of our delegated mandates, IGAD has been working in close conjunction with the leadership of the region to resolve, to help to resolve this conflict. I therefore want to take this opportunity to acknowledge the timely efforts of His Excellency Uhuru Kenyatta, President of the Republic of Kenya, who has been working tirelessly on behalf of the IGAD region to prevail upon the government of Ethiopia to resolve this conflict. IGAD further appreciate the efforts of our regional, regional leaders. His Excellency President Ismail Omar Gile, President of Djibouti, His Excellency President Yuweri Museveni of Uganda, His Excellency President Selva Kher of South Sudan, and His Excellency President Abdullah Farmajo of Somalia, who each in their own unique way, are working with the government of Ethiopia to end the conflict. IGAD also deeply appreciates the ongoing efforts being made by the other ambassadors, including the African Union of Peace from Africa and across the world, who have also been working diligently to bring about a final resolution to the conflict. Regional peace and security has also begun recording some setbacks as a result of rippling effects in other parts of our region as well. Of principal concern on this is weakening of the regional response to Al-Shabaab and other terror groups. We are also alive to, to the prospect of these conflicts facilitating the future proliferation of illegal firearms to the region and the coming back of Al-Shabaab as a terrorist organization. Already we have documented, Your Excellencies, an increase in the number of terror attacks in Somalia, observed the scape and apprehension of terror suspects in Kenya. Most sadly, we witnessed the bombing in Kampala that claimed the lives of innocent people. At this juncture, I take this opportunity on behalf of IGAD to once again categorically condemn all acts and terror and extend our condolences to the victims, families, and friends who have been affected by the heinous attacks, the heinous terror attacks. Your Excellencies, in all instances, IGAD deeply regret for the loss of life, destruction of property, violation of human rights, and the looming humanitarian crisis that have arisen as a result of this kind of conflict. Turning now to South Sudan, I will begin by drawing our attention to the tremendous progress the country has made in implementing the peace agreement, and particularly chapter one of the governance argument. <clears throat> now, we are talking about South Sudan with government, with coalition government, and moving with all its 
challenges to ahead. I would, however, like to emphasize that the successful implementation of Chapter 2, which is very important on the paramount ceasefire and transitional security arrangement, will mark a turning point for the peace process in South Sudan. It is issues around the implementation of provisions of the chapter that triggered an internal dispute with SAPLMIO and resulted in clashes in the border area of Jabal Meguins in August of this year. IGAD immediately engaged with the parties to the internal disputes and encouraged the opinion of avenues and dialogue. Our engagement established that the unification and redeployment of the necessary unified forces in an urgent priority to the Republic of South Sudan. In this regard, IGAD is conjunction with our partners on the ground is providing a necessary political support and have called upon the revitalized transitional government to allocate and avail the required financial and material resources for this undertaking. IGAD similarly call upon the international community to lift those sanctions that are obstacles to the effective implementation of the revitalized agreement on the resolution of the conflict in the Republic of South Sudan. IGAD also welcomes the recent overturns of His Excellency President Iweri Kaguta Museveni alongside Kenyan Special Envoy to South Sudan and the Troika partners to hold the long overdue retreat for the leadership of South Sudan as a confidence building measures to accelerate the implementation of the peace agreement. Your Excellencies, <clears throat> at this point, I want to thank the special envoy of IGAD to South Sudan, Ambassador Wais, who is working for the last four or five years tirelessly representing our organization and also the effort of our leaders. In Somalia, also led in convening and coordinating partners to prevail upon the leadership and peaceful resolve disputes across in the run-up of election. With this upcoming election, Your Excellencies, Somalia stands at the crossroad of destiny. The symbolize a historic moment in the country's road to revival, recovery, and renaissance. Whilst the process of the upper house was completed successfully last month, the process for the lower house is ongoing with the IGAD looks forward to the successful conclusion. IGAD has been supporting the democratic transition and remains fully committed to assist the people and the government of Somalia to avert any regression to conflict and instability. We have a confidence on the leadership of Somalia and the people of Somalia. They can really prevail on the situation that they are moving. For Somalia, the most important task that we are looking at is this election, democratic election, which fulfill the will of the people of Somalia. To counterbalance Your Excellencies, the challenges we have been experiencing, in peace and security. I am gratified to note that IGAD has also recorded some opportunities and successes. First and foremost, since election is one of the reflection of democracy, I want to commend Djibouti, Kenya, and Uganda have remained authors of peace and amidst and the turbulence that has affected the region. IGAD takes this opportunity to congratulate His Excellency President Yuweri Museveni and the people of Uganda holding peaceful election in January. IGAD further applauds our host country and His Excellency President Ismail Gile for the first mandate, for the fresh mandate accorded to him lead the nation by the people of Djibouti in April. 
in the same vein, IGAD congratulate His Excellency Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed Ali for his successful and democratic elections held in Ethiopia during the month of June this year. The upcoming election in Somalia and Kenya, Your Excellencies, dear brothers and sisters, will serve as a litmus test of how deep constitutionalism has taken root in our region. As IGAD, we wish the government and the people of Kenya and Somalia peaceful, democratic, and successful elections, which for the coming time. IGAD is optimistic that democratic principles will continue to be upheld and the practice of peaceful resolution of disputes through legal channels will be further entrenched to all electoral process in the region. At this juncture, ladies and gentlemen, let me remind this gathering that we are all stakeholders in peace, peace building. This is why I am also pleased to acknowledge the efforts at the grassroots level that IGAD has initiated to complement the high level peace building intervention that I have previously mentioned. Especially, I want to commend the efforts that we have doing in Somalia at the grassroots of peace building. And also, I want to thank our special envoy, Ambassador Guyo, who is working tirelessly to assist our brothers and sisters in Somalia. The IGAD, we say, Your Excellency, there cannot be real peace, security, or prosperity without women and youth. We are working on our half part of our population, that is women, by reorganizing our departments who really engage the youth and the women who will be the determinant factors of the society, especially in our region, which is more than 65% of the population is used. I am therefore delighted to connect with our new efforts to build peace and blow through initiatives such as the IGAD Youth and Women Forum for Peace, young poets and filmmakers who as peace ambassadors are working to counter the radicalization of our youth. I also welcome the formulation of prevention, diplomacy, and mediation protocol, which will further enhance our capacity to intervene in the situation of conflict. Excellencies, let me turn into the other development issues in our region. I will begin with coronavirus, which has been with us now for two long years. Over this period of prevalence, of the disease has raised four times with infections increased from quarter of a million this time last year to almost 900,000 at this time. And this also claimed four times as many as our brothers and sisters from 5,000 at this time last year to 20,241 this year in our region. In keeping my period so far in office, we are now in our second year of implementing the Regional Emergency Response Strategy to COVID-19. Here, with the tremendous support of our partners from the European Union, the African Development Bank, and GIZ, among others, we have logged an equal number of successes and challenges. On one hand, this response strategy has made remarkable progress in identifying our most vulnerable population spread across 45 cross-border interventions, intervention sites in seven countries of our member states. The strategy has reached more than 1.9 million people to deliver 6.2 million PPEs and 177,000 test kits. Additionally, IGAD has been facilitating the delivery of critical, critical equipments consisting of 22 modern ambulances 
seven field utility vehicles, seven mobile laboratories, and 40 PCR machines, which we have distributed to all our member states. This equipment is supplementing in the capacity of our member states for the prevention, testing, and tracking of the coronavirus in cross-border areas. These efforts are critical at the time when our region and indeed the African continent is still far behind the rest of the world in vaccination. As we speak, my brothers and sisters, the average rate of vaccination in IGAD region stands at only 6.6%. This is against the global average of 42.7%. That means seven times more than we have vaccinated over people. So we are far, far beyond, beyond from the average. More worryingly, Your Excellencies, According to our continental health authorities, Africa has recorded an 83% increase in infection this past week alone. That has been attributed to the Delta and newly emerging Omicron variant of COVID-19 that is repeatedly, reportedly more transmissible and resistant to selected vaccines. I am therefore compelled to caution caution that bearing these factors in mind, IGAD and Africa at large is now perhaps even more vulnerable than before the worst effects of the pandemic. Not only in terms of pandemic, but also the effects in economy, employment, and other social issues. At the point in my address, I would therefore like to issue a special call to our partners to sit with us once more as we review our interventions and adjust the, them toward responding to what is most needed by our people with the context of emergency situation. We must therefore remain faithful to our original intention to strengthen our health systems to have adequate capacity to cope with this and other pandemics. There is no alternative to enhancing the regional capability to test, trace, and vaccinate the most vulnerable sections of our population. And this is because none of us is safe until all of us, without exception, is safe. Alongside conflict and COVID, at the twin threats and drought and flooding which combined pose a significant threat to our food security status of our region. My brothers and sisters, the IGAD component of 2021 Global Report on Food Crisis concludes that an estimated 37.2% or 37.2 million or one out of every seven people are expected to be acutely food insecure in our region. The cocktail of climate change, conflict, and COVID, therefore, continues to drive displacement in our region as a consequence of the challenges they pose to the physical, economic, and social security of our region. In the IGAD region, at approximately 5%, we have one of the highest rate of displacement that is totaling 12 0.3 million people, which consisting of 4.2 million refugees and 8.1 million internally displaced persons. In order to mitigate these challenges, Your Excellencies, IGAD recognized the need for a comprehensive response strategy that is designed to simultaneously and effectively address multiple and mutually reinforcing hazardous as they, uh, as they emerge. I am encouraged by the effort IGA had made in 2021 to originate a regional disaster risk management strategy. In October this year, His Excellency President Uhuru Kenyatta launched the IGAD Climate Prediction and Application Center in Nairobi 
Kenya, which house a state of the art weather forecast and meddling unit and disaster operations center, which belongs to our member states and which really service our uh, member states fully and uh, daily. The information generated by the center significantly enhance our multi-hazard early warning and response capabilities and is being used by member states and partners to anticipate, predict, and mitigate climate change and related natural disasters, such as flood, drought, and pests, such as desert locust. IGAD has every intention for further building this capacity by establishing similar disaster monitoring situation units across all our member states in 2022 and beyond. In the same time, IGAD has been putting in place policy assets and robust mechanisms to stimulate economic development in the region and where possible, reserve the outward flow of migration. Two weeks ago, I was delighted to preside in Alisebe, Djibouti, over the launching of a $4.2 million project of infrastructural development and livelihood support targeting refugees and host communities in our region. Altogether, projects such as the support supported by the policy instruments, such as the protocol on free movement and transhuman, the regional infrastructural master plan, or blue economy strategy, among many others, are the building blocks through which we will build our regional structure and deliver on our commitment to the continental integration agenda through the African Continental Free Trade Agreement. Your Excellencies, this brings to me to my intention for the next two years, and here I will classify them into two categories. Let me start with the exterior category. And this speaks to how the IGAD region responds to prevailing challenges, presents itself and is perceived by the world. The fundamental priorities in this instance are threefold. The first priority is restoration of peace, security, and stability in our region. This is because it's a bedrock upon which all other interventions to be built upon. IGAD commits to continue working in tandem with our member states and like-minded partners to realize a peaceful outcome to active conflicts in the region. The second priority is effective prediction, prevention, and response to slow and sudden onset disasters. Already, IGAD has the making of a disaster response strategy and following the launch of the Disaster Operation Center in Nairobi on the 27th of October this year. Further commits to animate the disaster fund that was endorsed by 38th Extraordinary Assembly of IGAD, Heads of State Government in December 2020. The third priority is regional integration from below using the principle of manageable installments. It is my intention, Your Excellencies, to inspire the formulation of IGAD-owned and IGAD-led projects. That will accelerate our regional integra integration and at the community level and complete existing initiatives that have been generously funded by our partners. And also will help us to prioritize based upon the will and need of our member states. This approach constitutes the primary trust to our intention to take IGAD to the people. By directing a fraction of the resources, we mobilize from our member states toward projects that directly benefit our citizens. For instance, in the Mandera Triangle, I was particularly impressed 
by the level of regional integration and community interdependence through shared health facilities that bring together the people of Ethiopia, Kenya, and Somalia to one hospital, which bring all the patients from all from these countries and give a common service. So this kind of interventions really will, will bring more closer our member states and the people. However, the lack of usable bridge spanning to the river of Dawa limits the ability of the community to full advantage of the available health facilities. IGAD has undertaken to work closely with the national and international authorities and partners to address this gap in regional integration. Looking inward at the interior category of intention to the next two years, my brothers and sisters, I find that the roadmap for reform and revitalization that I shared with you a year ago during my inaugural state of the region address remain sufficiently comprehensive to guide us in this regard. Last year, I methodically reported on the far-reaching reform agenda that we formulated to systematically transform IGAD into an organization for 21st century. The reform initiatives focus creating a conducive environment for the implementation of new IGAD strategy plan that is 2021-2025, which we will launch here today. IGAD expects that the six pillars that support the architecture of the strategy will act as both a blueprint and guideline for the upcoming reporting period between 2030 and 2063. With this time frame, we shall be taking stock of the, the extent in which we have fulfilled our shared aspirations as articulated in the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals and African Union Continental Transformation and Integration Agenda. This is the logic that inspired us to break the tradition and instead of formulating a short five-year strategy, we elected to think bigger, longer, and further. As a consequence, IGAD Regional Strategy Plan 2021 to 2025 is the first in a series of six sub-strategies, each running for five years, that are to be subsequently implemented toward the grand vision of IGAD 20. 50. I am encouraged by the scale of our ambition and our deliberate decision to prepare and plan for the next generation by casting our eyes 30 years ahead. It is our intention, Your Excellencies, to accelerate the process of setting a firm foundation for the security, development, and property of the estimated 400 million people that will be living in our region by 2050. The seven principal, principal priorities under the reform initiative include number one, revamping the human resource structure and improving internal human resource capacity, digital transformation of the IGAD secretariat, construction of the new IGAD headquarter, institution, instituting the IGAD cancer center of excellence, establishing the implementation and awards and scholarship programs for our, our regional users and all people who really need this, creating the IGAD committee of eminent personalities who really work on different areas in political, diplomacy, and other social issues, and qualifying for EU pillar assessment in order to directly manage funding from our partners. Let me begin with the brick and mortar project last year. I was pleased to have hosted the IGAD chair, His Excellency Prime Minister Abdullah Hamdok, at the groundbreaking ceremony construction bids today in this podium. In April of this year, 
we broke a ground on the IGAD Cancer Center of Excellence that will be in Addis Ababa. And we are aggressively building partnership for this funding, funding and operation. I want to thank the government of the Federal Democratic Republic of Ethiopia and the leadership there for allocating the IGAD Cancer Center as a prime peace land in the capital city valued at over 200 million US dollars. Most importantly, I want to thank the initiators of this center who are a diaspora of these member states, the specialists who have extensive knowledge and experience on this area who initiated this thing, the son and daughters of this region. So I want to thank them for this initiative. I also express my sincere gratitude to the Eager Partners Forum and the Royal Kingdom of Saudi Arabia who generously assisted us on this process. In the realm of building intellectual capacity in our region, today we will be also formally launching, Your Excellencies, a call for application for first 300 scholarship that will support the students from vulnerable communities to have access to high, higher education at the International University of Africa in Khartoum, Sudan, and Kampala International University in Uganda. This scholarship program will be our flagship project for integration through education, bringing the young citizens of this region to one university and to one plot to integrate them and to be a friend. Most of us have experience of this and that will be a lasting friendship that can be turned into a friendship which, which bond a friendship between uh, countries and uh, communities. To strengthen the ability of IGAD to drive our efforts to peace building from below and safeguard the prospect of our security and stability, I am pleased to announce in this address to launch of the IGAD Leadership Academy. I am confident that with the support of the member states and partners, the IGAD Leadership Academy will grow into a house that brings together, grooms and nurtures the next generation of leaders who will steer our region to even greater heights of harmony and progress. As you know very well, leadership is the most important component of the society to gear, to bring that society to the highest level. So I'm pleased that this academy will bring together our cream of the leaders, the young leaders who can work together, who can learn together and finally share experience on this area. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, as you most certainly appreciate, the scale of our ambition can only be attained if we are able to marshal the resource to realize it. I am happy to report that during my time in office, IGAD has witnessed a tremendous improvement in the level of political will and financial commitment by our member states, many of whom are meeting their obligations in full and on time. However, there is still room for improvement. In order for IGAR to shore up our credibility as a rules-based organization and build our capacity to complement the efforts of our generous partners, it is imperative that the burden of responsibility is equitably shared by all our member states. At this juncture, I also want to take this opportunity to acknowledge and sincerely appreciate the support of our firm friends and partners, including the European Union and its members, the World Bank, African Development Bank, and UN agencies, as well as members of the IGAD Partners Forum and Troika countries. I um, thank you for your collaboration and support. IGAD is also thankful for the cordial relation and bilateral ties we enjoy with the new emerging partners who really are working very closely with us. Excellencies, I will conclude this year's annual address 
with the observation that our collective desire to prevail over the most difficult of circumstances is what has come to define us through the decades. We cannot change the geography of our region and we cannot choose our neighbors. In other words, the maps cannot redraw themselves. We are bound now and for the all time by the geographic, cultural, and economic ties that bind us, and we are inseparably connected to each other. This means, Your Excellencies, my brothers and sisters, we stand a better chance of overcoming our difficulties and thriving if we pool our resources and efforts only and only if together. Thank you very much. Please let's give His Excellency another applause of a crop. Thank you very much. You may be seated. Your Excellency, as you can see from the audience, the distinguished audience, you have received a standing ovation for giving us a very comprehensive state of the region. You have been able to look at the things that we have been able to accomplish under your leadership, but also you have guided us into the future. Colleagues, I don't want to uh, actually even dare attempt that I would even summarize His Excellency's uh, address. But for me, as I sat, it has helped me in several ways. I meet people who ask me, what is IGAD doing? especially when we have uh, challenges in our member states. His Excellency, thank you very much because you have outlined the quiet diplomacy that you are involved in day in, day out to try and ensure that we have a stable and secure region. And this goes to what His Excellency has articulated, that for IGAD we don't use public diplomacy, we use quiet diplomacy, and His Ex Excellency has been excellent in it. Priorities, you have really outlined them and I don't want to uh, get into them. But I've touched, because you have reminded me of a book I read, The Trouble with Nigeria by Chinua Chembe. And for those who have read that book, he says the trouble with Nigeria is leadership. And we would say perhaps the trouble that we have, not just in our region, but globally, is a challenge of leadership. And therefore, I'm sure colleagues you're excited as I am that IGAD will have a leadership academy to nurture young leaders. Your Excellency, uh, thank you very much. Now colleagues, uh, we wanted to get into session three and His Excellency has really guided us as we move to session three. In his address, he has outlined that under his leadership, we have come up with a NIGAD uh, strategy that covers the next five years, 2021 to 2022. And this looks, it's a building block as we get into looking at IGAD in the next 30 years in the vision 2050. I now want to request uh, uh, my colleagues, uh, uh, Awira and uh, Rachel, we want this strategy to be launched before you. As we said, this is a strategy that as we meet, you'll be holding us accountable if we have been able to implement it. But we will be implementing it together with our member states, with community leaders. I therefore request uh, Anthony symbolically to uh, come uh, with uh, Rachel. Anthony Awira is the director of planning, and uh, Rachel uh, works in the same uh, division. His Excellency is going to sign a copy of the strategy and once he signs the copy of the strategy, we will be requesting him to give a copy 
to each of our member states and each of the community leaders who are present. So I want to ask His Excellency, the first country to receive uh, the strategy is Djibouti. Please, the Ambassador of Djibouti. Just, uh, Ambassador, just come stand close to His Excellency. The next is Ambassador of Ethiopia. The next is Ambassador of Somalia. The Ambassador of Kenya. The Ambassador of South Sudan. The Ambassador of Sudan. The Ambassador of Uganda. <laughs> Colleagues, still in the spirit of taking IGAD to the local community and to the people, we want, we have few representatives from the community. I would ask uh, Madam Betty Romunia, please come and receive a copy of the strategy on behalf of the Karamoja cluster in Uganda. Mr. Ibrahim Mohamed Ali, on behalf of the cluster in Northern Kenya, Mandera in particular. <laughs> Madam Dinka Sukare Godana, on behalf of the, uh, 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 the cluster in Ethiopia. <laughs> Mr. Gured Jama Wed on behalf of the cluster in Djibouti. I request you display that for the photo as a show of commitment that we will be implementing this in the next five years, working with our member states, the communities, and our friends and partners. Please. Uh, Thank you very much, Your Excellencies. You may sit. Colleagues, now I want to call upon His Excellency, as he has mentioned in his State of the Region address, is that we are now, and we are going to request him to launch the bid for those who are interested to work with IGAD to help us build the ultra-modern uh, headquarters in Djibouti, as His Excellency has outlined in his speech, this is going to be an extraordinary building that is going to house all our programs in Djibouti under one roof. And therefore, we want to encourage both regional international bidders, we hope the best in that spirit of transparency and accountability. You will all be able to bid. But we encourage our people from the region to bid. We will be happy if we get one of our own building this because it will really uh, be able, we will be able to meet the standards. So I would like to request um, Your Excellency to come so that you are able to, uh, to launch uh, uh, the bid. So colleagues, as you can see there, 
Uh, that is how the building is going to look like. Uh, you can imagine uh, as you walk now, you can try to imagine that uh, you have just visited Djibouti, the chairman of uh, IGAD. Uh, I can see perhaps your office will be somewhere on the third floor. Uh, and you can now imagine you seated in your office as you uh, sign a few documents for us. And it will have different angles, and you can see it there. So, excellent. Let's uh, give His Excellency a very warm uh, clap for uh, launching. Now the bid is on. And we look forward that we will be able to do perhaps the next state of the region inside that building because it will have also a, a, an auditorium uh, for us to be able to do that. Equally, colleagues, in his uh, address, His Excellency has mentioned that desire that he has not only to have intellectual capacity, within the region, but to have regional integration through academics. I think for me, I hope you're in the same level, you're touched as I am, that now we don't have to have our young people googling for scholarship to go, I don't know, to Europe, uh, to US, to Australia. We are saying we have resources here. There is plenty of here. And we want sincerely to thank His Excellency and colleagues who have been working on this. And we have established, under the leadership of His Excellency, a universities forum. And these universities from our region have come together to give scholarship to our people. Please, doesn't that deserve a clap to the universities and our people? And these scholarships, we have gotten 300 uh, scholarships to start with from the International University of Africa in Khartoum, the Kampala International University in Uganda, and those 300 scholarships are now ready to be launched by His Excellency so that uh, uh, if those who have young relatives now, you can send them a quick WhatsApp message, tell them His Excellency is now getting to launch the scholarship, they can apply. Please, Your Excellency, I request you to come at least so that you can uh, help us uh, launch it. As you can see now, it's officially launched. That's the application form. Uh, the ambassador of Djibouti, you can type perhaps uh, it's, uh, uh, the name of the person perhaps you would recommend from Djibouti to get one. So the form is available. So thank you very much, uh, colleagues. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. It, well, uh, uh, we will uh, have it in French, uh, uh, the form as we put it up, uh, so that also we can uh, have uh, those who are French speakers can be able to apply. Colleagues, you can see what, under the leadership of His Excellency for the last two years, what we have been able to achieve, and we are looking ahead. Now, colleagues, we want to change the gear a little bit. All the time, we hear from people high up. And sometimes people think IGAD is in ivory towers. But His Excellency has told us, all those who work under him, that IGAD must reach to the people. And the IGAD must be felt by the people of the region. And therefore, as some of the traditions that he has started, one being uh, having uh, the state of the region address, is that he has also uh, invited community leaders to be able to share with us their experiences, the work they are doing, and the support that working with our member states, working with us in UGAD, that we are able to make those differences in our community levels. And therefore, I have the honor to invite Madam Betty Romunia. Madam Betty works with the Karamoja cluster in Uganda, 
works with the pastoral communities to try and resolve conflicts. So please join me in welcoming Madam Betty to share with us her experiences. And she will need a translator. She will be speaking in the local language. Mata Ateker. Mata Ateker is a greeting. Mata Yakal. Thank you so much for being here. I'm called Lomuria Betty. She comes from Moroto, Uganda, but standing in for the old Karamoja cluster. She works with Karamoja Development Forum, which is focused on pastoralist rights, research, and advocacy. Norwe when IGAD established the IGAD Cross-Border Development Facilitation Unit, it is when they saw that IGAD has really come to the ground and they have had, as a pastoralist organization, big hopes in fronting the needs of the people, of the pastoralists in the Karamoja cluster. Igad, knowing Igad as a, an organization that is mandated in integrating eight member states, uh, bringing the cluster approach which brought on board the Karamoja cluster, uh, composed of four countries, Uganda, Kenya, Ethiopia, South Sudan, uh, it brought this closer to them than merely looking at it far-fetched in terms of the eight countries. And uh, strengthening the, the issues of livestock development, which is key in the lives of the people in the Karamoja cluster, is one thing that they are looking at. And this is already uh, clearly seen with this establishment and getting to the ground in terms of the cluster approach. <laughs> IGAD at the ground level in form of the cluster approach has so far brought in uh, the coordination aspect in the sense that uh, the networking between the development actors, uh, the NGOs, civil society organizations, and the subnational authorities has been strengthened. The, there are several dialogues, several meetings, common uh, planning meetings that have so far taken place, and this is well appreciated already. Apollo, 
kapolo ngine yakata ra lato ma a a chedono kini kori a alunya na kini kukori dine arai no we iboreni ni todi unita ba kau kire kipedo ronda da ru chokin alimunti ve ki e kapolo no lai ga de gari ba kau nyeve unyo wani ni amadi onto ya kau nete na it kijata ro na pedo ena ru chokina ta kape e dengare ni odi apolo ange okobuku dine alakara no we as i come to a close uh igad has brought together several benefits in the Karamoja cluster and uh, appreciating the fact that one area needs resources from another area. Uh, you find that uh, the statements made by the executive secretary that we never choose where to be, uh, but rather we find ourselves already in that location necessitates a lot of collaboration in the IGAD region. And this is already happening with the drought prone area that IGAD sits in. She said, thank you so much. Thank you very much. I, I was going to pick on Ambassador of Kenya uh, to tell us which word he has learned of Karamoja cluster, uh, but uh, I'll be coming to that later. So we are meant also to learn a little bit of a word or two. I have picked a word, Apollo, so I'll be finding what the word Apollo means because I heard it several. So make sure you, uh, you get what at least one word or two what it means. Colleagues, now I wish to welcome uh, Mr. Ibrahim Mohamed Ali uh, from the Mandera cluster, who will... Uh, uh, speak both in Somali and English. Please let's uh, put our hands together and welcome. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammad wa sallam. Kulay qafki i fasiri laha ayya sawira dahiban umalayin ya of Somali, Kaibir Bankuso Kovia, in Greece, Yerno Bankuso Kovia, Modane, Dr. Gabayehu, Ambassador Rada, with the mother Kaladuan, with the mother Humna Haka, Egad, El Mibariasha, the man in Taku Idel Shirkan. Good morning. وحن مثلية مقعي قوي إبراهيم محمد علي هادين كتير جبر هوري وحن مثلية مندرة سومالي كلاستا وحن إيكا هاي سيجاد دولكا أما غراس رود ليفل وحن إيكا هاي سا أيان سيكوبان أدل أدل مريا قيبت أقو مهمسان هوش أقو مهمسان إيجاد كا هاي سا دولكا وأنا كنا بتقول يده، بس ماذا كنا بتقول يده؟ أود حيسة ودم ماذا؟ حبناها كأه إيجاد خاصة باستور لايفستايل حول قط هذا أي كوك كأه يسكن يده ضدك كل الدوان حبناها كل الدوان كسر جهده أو نشانالي تيجود أي كل الدوان تاي لكن يسكن دقن كأه حول قط هذا حل كسر أبارة يسجد بي أو إسلجرة أباهن إن لي سكانه Migration ka ama soo guritaan ki iya sadaha gal ki iya hawla haan odan Aya gao ka aawin aya Waddan kasta ama guddamada kaludududuan Xawla leidi xawla da qatada marka isu gud biyaan xilliya da abara haa Aya gao haddana ka aawin aya Dan ka aafimaad ka sidi man daira okala Iga ad marka guddan baysay Ambulances ki sidi dokta gabiya hu unno shaygay Ambulance aya la kaynay dawoyin aya la kaynay Laboratory kits, lugu bar ya udur hadi ayaa la kani. Farm implements ayaa la kani. Hawlo farabadan ayay ay igat kahaysa. Nabadaynte, dagaala awurki, ay nabadi wuxu yaran ay kudi santay. Marka dorka ay igat kule dhaay, hubnaha kale duduun, dowladaha kale duduun, mid saaki maragmadan taahuuye, an u baahnen in ad loga shakayu. So. We have learned the man under the leadership of Dr. Gabriel in at Kurdistan, Ambassador Rada, the man representatives at Kurdistan, a good in at Kurdistan, at 
خاصة حقه كسر إنسان دنك نبت جليده. إنت أيان الصومالي كسر كوبيا سكابن أيان إنجليز كوهالله يا مركا نقيبير. That's now enough for the Somalis, and I will summarize in a very short moment in English. Dr. Gabayehu, the leadership of this organization, ambassadors, and researchers and academics from across the region. Good morning once again. <coughs> Listening to your speech, Dr. Gabayehu, you have more mandate than the member states' uh, presidents. And listening to a summary of your profile, you are designed for the job. I hope so. So, if, and your choice of the leadership of the position wasn't, uh, was not by mistake. Let me say that in a summary. Uh, Dr. Gabiehu, peace building is your main mandate, the way I have uh, uh, heard from your speech and development, that will be adequate. I will only focus on one single item in what you do. And I have received a copy for my cluster. I'll go through before I hand it over to them. A drought is one issue. Peace building in mitigating that drought when the pastoralist search for pasture and water is a key thing. And then the health sector for these pastoral communities also an, a, a very essential uh, key in your mandate. When you went through Mandera issue, I thought you have been there. The first speech by His Excellency, I touch a little bit of your mandate that is already there. Let's reduce conflict by reducing illiteracy level. Like our region, Mandera, Garissa, Wajir, uh, the NFD entirely, illiteracy level is at 70. You can look at that. Illiteracy level is at 70. So you cannot reduce conflict without touching literacy. You cannot reduce poverty without touching literacy. You cannot reduce diseases and infections without tackling literacy. So with your help, using your representatives who will liaison with the pastoral or agriculture and the livestock departments, we can target the pastoralist literacy. We have more than 300 schools with one teacher each because of the effect of the terror activities. Uh, please, let's target literacy to reduce terror activities, to reduce diseases, to reduce conflict, and to increase trade, the, the intercommunity trades. Uh, maybe if, we, if I get free time with you, Dr. Gabayehu, and the other dignitaries, I'll share a bit of of more of these stories, but for now, uh, that is for me at the grassroots level. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Ibrahim. You have emphasized the power of the pen as the best weapon. And I think that is within the spirit that His Excellency has been trying to encourage the local universities within the region to give scholarship to young people so that they can be armed with knowledge and critical mind for that matter. Thank you very much. I'm a Hasentai. Now the next one is Madam Dida Sukare Godana from the Ethiopian cluster. Please let's welcome her with a, with a warm clap. Ethiopia, Radu, 
مكان كي سكر غدانا ديدني يتوبي أرنفة يتوبي أخي سمو لا فقط في أرومي أرنفة. She's Sokari Godana Dida. She comes from Ethiopia, Yabalo, under Borana cluster. Eh, Kanavi, I'm a Diko Afan Namale Nadibani. One me Nadur Dabredu Bate, Afan Namale Dagae, Gudo Lembe, who mum, Wayad Hia. Wan igad kanera, wan diko dubacu berbad. Kanavi, obolean tena, ka asin nufide, full wal bersifte, asit wal umneya dad dad darako amnu, asit ikacun kena, wal timun kena, galatoma ulfada salingela. So Sokari is really appreciative of the opportunity. To join this congregation through the initiative of IGAD, uh, and which has brought many people, including different clusters, to this forum. Wang gabaya rati no jati, wan edu lafamak alle isani tutukum berbada wan edu rato jati. So she appreciates the fact that Igad is supporting different spheres of livelihoods, which includes water, food security, and peace building. Eh, kau wan ni sini rato jatu, danga dada nu. Ethiopia has a sabab sablami gosadadati walinjirata wan nagenya rati umat ka wal tufide wan naga ojachuf tatafi gudo wan da sai singo te jira gudo isi le chumanga la tefanda. She strongly appreciates the cross border peace initiative that IGAD has driven over the past recent times between the cross border communities. In between Ethiopia, for example, and Kenya, at the cross-border areas. Sanam malle la meso wana inje chubar badu warani gosa kunini wana ka Ethiopia kesati gos toku chala dontai sabab sabla mil danga irujur chufayu demte wana dada rat isino jete kaka gabraf borana gosi maka edu da undan dau wana kana rat naga isino jete kunin. Nulen aku dua parti leh berlawan ni wan dan denuni gudor rata jatuh jira naga ni dansa yo naga ni jira tak kawal tu fulaj ufaku nulen kilometer ya ganar umne asal wal tak asal umne wal dua baju dan dena wan kan kasih ni rata jatuh mon nulen aku mata birat jira wal ino jatuh jira. So Sokari really appreciates some of the key examples of initiative that Igad has been driving on cross border community peace building. An example she is given is about uh, the peace building uh, uh, between conflicts between uh, the, uh, you know Gabra and Borana who live along the borders between Kenya and Ethiopia. IGAD has played very significant role in bringing those two communities together to resolve peace. And as a community, they are really appreciative of that. <laughs> Umat Ethiopia ke jermulu dangar demte agak araler jajabate yo isin walin dabate naga kanir rato jatte naga wan cufruan dasa tahatefi iga adik arak odisin jajabate wan kan odja cujur tufi inul fefana ya thayyalla suman fitada isanil inul fat agalatoma isanil jecho. So finally, she says as a community, she is really appreciative of the peace building. A process that IGAD is, is driving and community involvement. So they are really at the community level within the Borona cluster, they are really appreciative and supportive of that IGAD initiative. And with that, she thanks you all. Please, let's give her a better clap than that.
if, I don't know if you're observing because that came from her heart. I felt it coming deeply from her heart. So let's give her a very, very warm clap. Thank you so much. <laughs> Colleagues, uh, last but not least, uh, we have a young man uh, who we also want to hear from, from the Djibouti cluster, Mr. Jama Gwedi. Please, Mr. Jama. Madame, Monsieur, bonjour. Je m'appelle Goulet Djama Yeti et je suis là ici devant vous pour représenter le cluster Djibouti Dirkel. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Goulet and uh, I will be talking to you on behalf of uh, the community living in the Dirkel cluster, uh, Djibouti, Ethiopia, Somalia. Ok. Uh, Excellence, Monsieur le secrétaire exécutif de l'IGAD. Excellence, Monsieur, Madame, le directeur des départements de l'IGAD. Excellences, messieurs les partenaires, messieurs et madame les représentants des différents clusters. Madame, uh, monsieur, bonjour. Uh, Mr. Executive Secretary, uh, Excellences Ambassadors, uh, representatives from the communities, and uh, all protocols observed. C'est un grand plaisir pour moi de participer à cette importante réunion et de représenter le cluster des Kills, et je remercie aussi l'IGAT de m'avoir donné cette opportunité de dire quelques mots. Je suis honoré de vous représenter les populations qui vivent dans le Dikhil Cluster, et je voudrais vous remercier l'IGAT Secretariat pour me donner l'opportunité de vous donner quelques paroles. Nous sommes pleinement conscients du rôle de l'IGAT dans la coordination du renforcement de la résilience à la chécheresse dans la région de l'IGAT. Nous sommes fully aware of the role that l'IGAT is playing in resilience building within our communities. Uh, depuis le sommet tenu à Nairobi en septembre uh, 2011, qui a conduit à la, au lancement de l'initiative de l'IGAD sur la résilience à la chasseresse et sa durabilité. Since the summit in 2011 in Nairobi, during which, during which the Drought Resilience Initiative was launched. Afin afin de mettre fin aux crises de chasseresse dans la région, beaucoup d'efforts ont été menés dans notre région. In order to mitigate the drought effects in the region, uh, so many achievements have been fulfilled so far. Uh, L'initiative de l'IGAD pour la résilience et la durabilité en cas de chasseresse a été développée par l'IGAD et les États membres comme une stratégie pour mettre fin aux urgences liées à la chasseresse. The drought, uh, Resilience Initiative by IGAD uh, is meant to mitigate the drought effects in such a way that the drought recurrent effects do not affect the populations anymore. En élaborant des programmes de développement pour la résilience à la chécheresse après la chécheresse de 2010-2011, en se focalisant sur les communautés vulnérables dans les zones arides et semi-arides, le programme donne la priorité à la coordination transfrontalière et la programmation commune entre les États membres. After uh, programs and projects have been developed within the framework of the Drought Resilience uh, Initiative of IGAD, uh, many projects have been implemented at the cross-border areas and in the different clusters. Avec pour objectif des communautés, des institutions, et des écosystèmes résilients aux catastrophes de la chécheresse dans la région euh, de l'IGA d'ici 2027. For the objective of uh, strengthening cross-border cooperation between member countries and the communities. Le programme du cluster 4 de l'IGA vise à renforcer la résilience des communautés vivant dans le cluster de Dikil confronté à la chécheresse et aux catastrophes connexes. So uh, the Dikhil cluster programming within the framework of Idrisi is helping our communities uh, be more resilient to the impact of droughts. Il contribuera à cet objectif en facilitant le développement d'un approvisionnement en eau fiable, accessible et durable, en améliorant la résilience 
et la productivité des systèmes de pâturage qui soutiennent les moyens de subsistance dans les clusters en améliorant la productivité agricole durable et l'accès aux services de base. And this by uh, enhancing and improving access to drinking water and also access to uh, agriculture projects. Et aussi la réduction des conflits et de l'insécurité en ciblant les communautés pastorales et agro-pastorales de cluster de Kiel. And also by mitigating the uh, uh, insecurity and the, the uh, impacts of uh, communal uh, crisis. Nous espérons que le programme du cluster de Kiel se concrétisera prochainement et que les partenaires membres au développement donneront la prior priorité au cluster en mobilisant les ressources nécessaires à la mise en œuvre du programme. Merci so de votre attention. We would uh, like also other uh, partners to be joining the initiative and especially for the Dikhil cluster so as to consolidate the gains so far. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Let's give a, a Jama another louse of a crop. Thank you so much. <laughs> Colleagues, now we have heard from the Secretariat. We have heard from the local people and what is happening and the change that is happening. But all this work <clears throat> cannot be possible without the support of our member states. The member states and you colleagues who are here pay taxes. And these taxes enable our member states to make contribution to IGAD. And therefore, we are very grateful and we thank you very much. Now I wish to uh, call uh, Ambassador Makadi Mofad to make some remarks on behalf of the chair of IGAD. Please, Ambassador. Let's welcome Ambassador. Please, let's give him a better clap because he has to convince the member states to keep paying so that we keep doing the good work. So, Ambassador, welcome. Okay. Uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Before I start, I would like just to say that uh, I am in a very difficult situation after this very elaborative and uh, fruitful words and statement by His Excellency, the Executive Secretary. And so, I have, uh, I will resort to a, a story by uh, a Ugandan politician. He says that uh, there was an election and there were 10 candidates. And so, the 10 candidates were to speak, all of them, in that occasion. So one candidate, the te one was uh, to speak the last one, the 10th. So when he came to, to, to deliver his statement, he found that the audience was tired and exhausted, and said, he said very few words. He said that, you know that everything good and every statement good that has been said by each and every one of the nine candidates before me is my statement. And each bad word that has been stated by each and every one of the nine candidates before me is not mine. But here, fortunately, all the words that have been spoken before me are very nice and very helpful for our region. The second thing is that also, now we are approaching uh, the lunch time. And in Arabic, we have a, a proverb saying that is a ja'at al ghabat al which can be translated that when the stomach is hungry, the mind will be absent. So I will try to be a brief. Your Excellency, Dr. Burkana Gabriel, who is the Executive Secretary of IGAD, Your Excellencies, Ambassadors, uh, Sisters and Brothers 
members of delegations, heads of divisions, institutions, and especially voice of IGAD, as well as the staff of IGAD Secretariat, representatives from our development partners, representatives from our partners from the media, ladies and gentlemen, all protocol observed. It gives me a great honor to address this important gathering occasion on behalf of His Excellency Dr. Abdul Hamdok, Prime Minister of Sudan and Chairperson of IGAD. I hereby convey his greetings and the greeting of the Sudanese people as they struggle to consolidate their democratic transition. I will assure you that of his commitment to, to steer the ship of Igad with the support of his colleagues, heads of state and government of Igad countries to its final destination of a prosperous, peaceful, and integrated Igad region. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the challenge facing our region economically, politically, health-wise, environmentally, socially, and security-wise warrant more coordination and cooperation between the IGAD countries. We have just approved the last we have just approved the largest budget in IGAD, IGAD's history for the year 2022, with an increase, an increment of for more than 43 percent from the budget of the year 2020. This is a crystal clear evidence of the commitment of the IGAD member states to enhance IGAD secretariat capabilities and position it better to serve the region, our, our people, and address the growing challenge, the ever-growing challenge facing our region. As we move ahead in, the IGAD, in implementing the IGAD strategy 2021-2025, we need to work collectively and harmoniously so as to achieve our six strategic goals in all the pillars of IGAD strategy. We in, our, in Sudan's chairmanship with IGAD, we also give priority to the following areas. Firstly, achieving peace and consolidating peace, security, stability, and democracy in the Igad region. Secondly, enhancing infrastructure connectivity, economic cooperation, and trade between Igad countries. Thirdly, empowering youth and women, providing employment opportunities benefiting from the demographic, demographic dividend to achieve social development. Fourthly, food security and nutrition. Fifthly, developing our human resources and preparing them for the era of digital transformation and digital economy. Sixthly, conserving the environment and building resilience against climate change and other natural disasters. Currently, we are working with our sisters and brothers in the Republic of South Sudan, UNHCR, and IGAD Secretariat in implementing IGAD initiative on durable solutions for refugees. IDBs, returnees, and host communities 
in Sudan and the Republic of South Sudan, which is, is one of the flagship projects of our uh, chairmanship, as well as it is going to be one of the basic, uh, it's going to be one of the basic achievements of IGAD. We are addressing the challenge facing more than 7 million refugees, IDBs, returnees, and host communities in Sudan and the Republic of South Sudan. Also, in the extraordinary meeting of EGAD Council of Ministers in June 2021, the Council of Ministers agreed that we to establish a regional center for health preparedness and response to crisis that we are going to work closely in order to make it a reality on the ground so as to prepare our region to better respond to any future pandemic. Also, we are working closely with uh, the Secretariat and other member countries in EGAD to, to bring EGAD closer to the people. And we really thank the Executive Secretary for his uh, initiative on the State of the, the Region Address, which is today we have the second one, and also with his uh, efforts regarding bringing representatives from the different communities who are benefiting from the uh, EGAD, different EGAD initiatives at the gross, grassroots level. Also, we are working with our member with our sisterly member states of EGAD and the Secretariat to make EGAD more equitable organization in which each and every member state finds itself. To conclude, Your Excellencies, I would like to avail myself of this opportunity to really thank our development partners for their generous support and contribution to UIGAD since its establishment. And we will assure them of our readiness to cooperate with them in order to achieve the, objective, the objectives of our strategy. Also, I would like to thank our host, the government and the Republic and the people of the Republic of Kenya for the hospitality accorded to, each, to all the delegations since our arrival here in this beautiful city of Mombasa. Also, I would like to wish our Christian sisters and brothers a Merry Christmas, and also I would like to, to wish each and every one of you a very prosperous and happy New Year. Also, we wish our sisters in Somalia and Kenya a very peaceful and transparent elections that will consolidate democracy in our region. Also, I would like to thank the management of uh, Sarova White Sands Hotel and other hotels which are hosting the delegations for the services that they have been providing to all delegations participating in these meetings and wish those who are traveling a safe trip back home wish you all the best and have, have a, a prosperous 2022. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum. Colleagues, that club is not a club for the chairman of Egan. Let's give a better club for the chairman of Egan. Thank you very much, uh, Chair, for calling us into collective action. And those words of encouragement, when we hear those words of encouragement from our member states, we really feel uh, encouraged and uh, 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 the resolve to do even better uh, in crisis. Colleagues, uh, I also have the responsibility to give a vote of thanks on behalf of the Executive Secretary. 
But before I do that, let me make uh, a few announcements. First is that this is, has been a special occasion and requires that we have some memorable photos. And therefore, after the vote of thanks, we will have a, a photo session. And the photo session, we would like to do it this way, that we would have uh, the first session of the photo, uh, His Excellency, together with the ambassadors, and because they are few, and uh, they, they will do it here, then after that, there will be a photo session with the community leaders. They are also equally few. They will do it here. After that, His Excellency we ha will have a photo with uh, a few researchers, the brains that are driving our thinking with the region. They are also few. They will do it here. Finally, as I said, the thing that you don't know about His Excellency is that good heart. He also wanted those people who really support us at different levels within the IGAD. Also, we will have a few of them that represent those services that sometimes we take for granted. They are services that when we are really looking good and all that, we forget there are people who really do the hard work. And those, His Excellency did not forget them. They are right here. So they will be uh, the last one to take the photo uh, with IGAD. The eager directors, like myself, we have had many photos with the ES, so this time uh, we will uh, omit you in the schedule uh, because uh, uh, we know the photos are so many. Uh, we want those who have never uh, really had an opportunity to take a photo with the ES immediately after giving his uh, state of the region address to do that. Last time was the directors. This time let's allow those who are a little bit uh, uh, down there. Um, colleagues, let me now do the honorable thing on behalf of the executive secretary to really sincerely first thank the people of the region. It's the people of the region that have given us the responsibility to do what we do. It's the people of the region from our respective countries that pay taxes so that our member states can make contribution to IGAD. Please join me in clapping and thanking our people in the region. <laughs> Secondly, let me also thank our member states. They are the ones who extract those resources from the people. Uh, and if you have ever followed those uh, people called, uh, in Kenya they call them KRA, the revenue, so that the member states can get some money to give us, they are really uh, uh, not the friendly people you want to meet every day. But our member states ensure that this is done friendly and also makes a contribution to us so that we can continue the good work. We also get support from our member states in all dimensions, in offering in all the things that we really ask. Our, our member states have never disappointed. And they are also there representing us at the continental level, in the African Union, in the United Nations. So really, Please join me in thanking our member states. Let's give them a hearty clap. <laughs> EGAD has many friends and partners. They cut across the entire group. They support us. Some even support us with their taxes. They give us and trust us with their money. And we are able to do the work that we do to support the region. So please, let's join hands thanking EGAD partners and friends. The ES has uh, assembled an extraordinary team of directors. This team is a team that tries to bring and what the chair has talked about, that corrective responsibility. We have the special envoys, we have the directors, and these directors really do a lot of work ensuring that everything on behalf of the ES is run smoothly. Please let me thank the directors, and if directors you could uh, just stand and wave, that would be good. The directors of IGAD, wherever you are, just stand. Yes, uh, 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 they are saying that they don't want to stand. The waving is enough. Thank you very much. Then we have the IGAD staff from the people who receive you from the gate as you enter to people who do different functions everywhere. These people work very hard, and their commitment has never been in question. 
we really thank. Let's join hands and thank the IGAD staff. <laughs> Colleagues, it would not be fair if we didn't thank the Executive Secretary. Colleagues, you have seen IGAD is in safe hands. IGAD has a leader. And you know, when I was giving you those things that you don't know about the Executive Secretary, if you see this tall man walk majestically and march, he's likely to intimidate you. But he has a good heart. And that good heart has ensured that within IGAD, we have leadership that cares, leadership that is able to mobilize each and every member of staff, also bringing our member states together and working in harmony. I can say this with no fear of contradiction, that IGAD stands as the best performing and responsive regional organization in the continent, not just in Africa. So we are really proud that we have such good leadership. Please join me hands in again clapping to, for the executive secretary and thanking him. And I want you to clap harder so that he can continue with that same spirit. So please clap for him again. Now there are many people who have really made this successful. His Excellency had put a committee, a committee that has done a super job ensuring everything is done to precision. Uh, uh, and and uh, I give the, the background of His Excellency. He has background of uh, working in police. So the people who have worked in security, precision, accuracy is the first mark that you're given. So I want uh, the team that was the committee that was organizing this, uh, Director Onyari, the, the chair, Director Awira, where are you? Please just stand up, Philip, uh, the rest. Uh, just stand so that uh, Mubarak is there. Yes, Nul Sheikh is there. Thank you very much for making this a success. The media that has covered this and ensured that uh, we reach the people everywhere in the region, thank you very much. The people who have translated and ensured that uh, uh, the message is able to reach, and the chair of IGAD has thanked the hotel and everyone. Now I want us to do what we call a proper clap for everyone. We are going to, after this, remember there are people, all the of us, after we finish, we will have a group photo for all of us outside. That's after every group. And outside there, uh, if the photo, if you'll smile, if you'll show a good smile, we are likely to reward you with an eager uh, calendar and diary. But for you to get that, you must smile. And you must give us the best smile. And that will be done outside after everything. Now, colleagues, let me request you to stand. We do one warm clap for everyone. And this clap will be wishing everyone, uh, for those who celebrate Christmas on behalf of the Executive Secretary, wishing you a Merry Christmas, wherever your Christmas will be, and those who will celebrate New Year, wishing you a happy 2022. Now, this club is a traditional, it's a good club. My name is Nyambura, and Nyambura is a rainmaker. And therefore, you better do this club very well. Otherwise, I'll ensure there is a heavy rain here. So if you want not to be in trouble and enjoy the beautiful sunshine, please ensure you do this club. And this club is a rain club. And it starts very simply. When the rain forms, it starts by forming crowds, right? But the crowds don't, the crowds are never still. I know diplomats are always polished and still. This time, we want to shake you a little bit. We want when the crowds form, you will do a bit of dance. We will also reward the person who will give us the best move. So we are watching, and my team, and the executive secretary, they are watching to see who deserves a calendar and a diary. Then you do the move, then we'll start, the rain always starts by drizzling. If it drizzles, increases the intensity to two, to three, to four, then always good rain has lightened. One, two, three. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay, let's go. The crowds are coming. Let's see the good moves. The ambassador of Ethiopia, we are waiting to see the good moves. I'm a better, I'm a better move. Then uh, it has started to rain. Increase to two, three, four, lightning, one. 